I'm Mark Atwood, and I'm the community manager for Eucalyptus Systems. <coughs> Easy enough to tell from little Eucalyptus cards I've been handing out. Um, Stuart asked me three days ago, three days ago, to fill in for um, Monty Taylor, who had a family emergency, and so he could not make it all the way around the planet to speak to you about Swift. Which is too bad. I was looking forward to seeing his talk myself. Um, so instead, I'm going to talk about Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus originally started as a research project out of the University of California, Santa Barbara, um, by these crazy people. The um, guy on the top is Rich, and these are five of his seven graduate students. Um, they were working in supercomputing theory and grid computing networks and that sort of stuff. Um, all kind of very exciting stuff for the theoretical computer um, supercomputing world who looked at our, the whole cloud thing that's going on and tut 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 it at the primitive technology and there's nothing really interesting research-wise and uh, this. And so the world's diverging, but what Rich did is um, he had a, co a contract with um, one of the national laboratories in the United States to build something, anything that let them start doing some real world um, data analytics on large clusters of um, cheap computers that the national labs had. And several other groups put together these sophisticated, complicated grid computing systems that required from scratch rewrites of everybody's Fortran analytics and that. Ah. And um, Rich and his team decided instead to re-implement Amazon AWS. And they wrote this paper. And after, and it was an interesting research project for them. It was, it was going to get them seven people master's degree and another line in the CV for Rich. And all of a sudden, everyone went nuts. And people were coming out of the woodwork from large dot coms to try to hire all of them away for very large salaries to build this just for them. And they realized there is maybe a business opportunity here. They came up with this incredible, awful backronym, by the way, the Elastic Utility Computing Architecture Linking Your Programs to Useful Systems. Um, the real reason for the name is Santa Barbara is completely overrun with eucalyptus trees. Um, some nut job brought one back from Australia about 100 years ago. And um, eucalyptus trees have no natural predators in North America. <laughs> it's a good thing that... Um, they're um, climactically constrained to just Southern California, or we'd have another kudzu invasion on our hands. You um, Actually, it was tried, and um, koalas don't, is there's um, some natural pathogen in North America that kills them, so. They're not giving each other chlamydia. <laughs> that too. That might be it, because um, Southern California routinely burns to the ground every two years, except for the fucking eucalyptus trees. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, doing what any smart um, tech people did in Southern, Cal do, um, do in Southern California, they went and talked to companies with names like this, um, who, um, like um, Benchmark is somewhat um, famous for um, being one of the two companies in the bidding war for this little search company that no one thought would go anywhere. So they decided not to take it all for themselves and so only gave them $10 million if someone else gave them $10 million. Um, Benchmark made at last count something like over $100 billion on that investment in Google. So anyway, they gave us some money to start a company. And we ha and jumping forward, in addition to a company, we have this architecture. Every single one of these parts are a web service, speaking WSDL. Um, you point web browsers or SOAP clients or REST clients at it all. And the two things at the top are the cloud controller and Walrus. And Walrus is our S3 clone, and the cloud controller is our EC2 clone. Every component is a web service. WS security is used between every component. You could run every one of these components on one box, or you could run all of them on separate boxes, geographically separated, and as long as you can get um, secure HTTP through it all, it all comes together as one eucalyptus node. Some working feature, uh, meta features of our project, it is all open source. It's in GPL, it's a GPL3. Um, there has been some FUD. Unfortunately, our own CEO didn't help very much with it about parts that are um, closed and parts that are open. 
turns out actually everything is open. It's all GPL3. Um, as I said, it's all written in C and Java. It's hosted on Linux boxes. Um, we don't um, emulate the entire AWS API, just two critical parts. Um, and you can do a little bit of your own configuration to it. Now, before I go into this or skip past it, how many people have used S3? I'm trying to, uh, yeah, quite a few. Do I, do I have to give a quick summary of? S3 the, is Amazon. Am, S3 is Amazon. Okay, I'll, I'll give a um, fast um, 60 seconds description of how S3 works. S3 is a, storage, is a storage API in architecture backed by whatever implementation. Amazon has actually re-implemented themselves three times and no one on the outside has ever noticed. Um, it has a flat namespace, which is very similar to the DNS. In fact, it works hand in glove with the DNS. If you have a flat namespace of things called buckets, um, if the bucket looks like a domain name and you have their DNS pointers pointed at the S3 or Walrus server, then you can access it by going to that domain name and Walrus or S3 will remap it. Um, objects are stored in buckets. Objects have names that look an like, awful lot like path names, but they also are flat. Um, the slashes are there for um, human readability and the system doesn't take advantage of that. Um, buckets have certain maximum sizes. Buckets are immutable, um, items in buckets are immutable. You can um, write to it once, you can read from it, you can read ranges from it, you can delete it, you can move it, but once it's written, it can't be changed. There's a bunch of APIs to it. The best known are the SOAP and the RESTful ones. Is a great deal of the web browsing that you do right now is actually coming out of S3 and you don't realize it. Walrus or S3 is used to keep boot images. How many of you, how many of you have used um, Amazon EC2? Is, um, Amazon keeps your execution images in S3. Eucalyptus, we keep your execution images in Walrus. Now we get to the limitations. We, um, our first implementation of Walrus, it's um, using the file system as the back end. So there's not actually anything interesting happening from a storage architecture point of view. Um, unlike Amazon's. It's that way in part because A, it's a first run. Um, second, in, um, our, we are primarily targeting um, enterprise data centers and so people are already used to doing um, large RAID SANs. Um, we are working on projects to make it distributed, make it use something other than the, um, than the file system, but not yet. What's coming out of Eucalyptus, the other Amazon APIs, the query service, the um, queuing service, is we're working on projects to make it HA, to make it more distributed, make it multi-data center. Um, like I said before, we are open source, not only, are we, and we're not open source the way like say a large social networking company I could name is open source, where they write things and kick it over the wall. Um, we use Launchpad, all of our work is done publicly. We use Launchpad to keep our code in. We use Launchpad to track our public bugs in. We put, um, all of our engineers um, have to, um, is, when they're working on something, when they do, um, they do a merge, the merge runs through an internal QA and pushes up the Launchpad every night. So you will see, at worst case, 12 hours behind what our engineers are hacking on at any given time. We have a website for our community. Um, it has wiki, forums, documentation, and something we call the concourse. Um, it's one of our Italian employees gave it that name because we didn't want to call it a contest or a race. Um, with the concourse, we're asking anybody who's done anything interesting with eucalyptus, whether it be a fork or an interesting application running on it or an interesting legal case or something, to um, write a wiki page about it. Um, when we have collected enough of them, we'll have everybody look at them and vote on the 10 best ones and give those 10 best um, a free year support contract. Which then basically you're getting the same thing that the people who are giving us money has got. To be a contributor, you have to sign a community license agreement, which is almost identical to the one you would sign for Fedora, for OpenStack, or for Apache. Um, you submit a patch against a launch pad tree. Um, send the um, issue to our issue tracker and you get an account on our issue tracker when you sign the CLA. 
If you have that, you can read and check our issue tracker. You can, you can write comments on any of the bugs in it. Other people who have, to, who have anything they want to, issues they want to send in or things they want to talk about can use our public forum or they can send us email. Um, that is what I have to say about eucalyptus. I've been handing out little cards, inviting people to join the project or at the very least check it out. Um, one of the slides that's not here is if any of you are Ubuntu users, um, eucalyptus is also in the Ubuntu world known as Ubuntu Enterprise Cloud. If you put together a couple of machines, install them from scratch, tell one of them is a UEC node controller and the rest they're UEC node clients, you will get, an, you will get a eucalyptus stack. Thank you very much. Questions. Any questions? Um, so for the back end, you said there's no replication of the data yet. If mm -hmm. um, someone just sets up a, um, say something like Ceph, which will automatically take care of the distribution, is there many or any changes required um, in the rest of the stack to make, could take advantage of, of um, to, to spread the workload to other nodes? Um, we actually have a patch we haven't integrated to use Ceph. Um, one of the cool things about that patch is that it was pretty minimal. It only had, it was only a patch against one particular WSDL component in the Walrus system. Um, the rest of the um, Eucalyptus system d um, needs no changes to do that. Anything else? Anyone else? Um, yeah. Amazon has, mm -hmm. Amazon has a, a system for uh, sort of like an Akamai type system so that you don't actually have to serve things from your instance. You can just serve them through Amazon CloudFront. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about something like that? That would be kind of awesome. Um, what would be more likely what we would do, and this is me hand-waving with no knowledge of any plans, is to, um, is what would be awesome is we set up, if we set up an agreement or wrote some code interface with, say, Akamai's API. Amazon can do CloudFront because Amazon needs a constant a content distribution network for their own service, and, they're, and they own the data centers they're running in. We don't run a public, you know, we run a very small um, public eucalyptus cloud. We don't um, run a um, service like Amazon does. We instead expect people to have their own data centers, their own um, agreements with their own internet service providers. Um, people have um, Akamized content coming off of Walrus. It's reasonably straightforward because from the outside, Walrus just looks like a web server. And so if you can Akamize a web server, you can Akamize Walrus. But we don't have anything like CloudFront ourselves. Does the CLA at this point involve copyright assignment of any kind? It does. Um, we, you, you license it to us, and then we license it back to you. Um, we have our own, law, our own lawyers looking at how this is similar and different to all the others. Um, I myself am not a huge fan of the way it's written right now. I would much rather the um, CLA be that you um, that um, you assign us the um, the um, rights that um, match to the open source license, and you keep the ownership yourself. And that may be the way it ends up. Uh, one of the I don't I don't want to use the word problem, but one of the issues with S3 right now is mm -hmm. that if you have large files, you can't really use our sync like mechanism you have to kind of put the whole file up there mm -hmm. uh, is your system any different or do you have any plans to update parts of a file sort of speak um, ours is not different um, we don't, um, I know of no plans to extend the API um, if you have to do something like that to s3 what I is um, speaking for myself what I would tell you to do is um, go look at a product called jungle disk and Jungle Disk writes to both S3 and to Walrus. And S3, I mean, Jungle Disk uh, presents a fuse interface and then uses a um, interesting way of na uh, mapping names um, of a f local file system to S3 or Walrus um, objects. And then you can actually um, copy to or rsync to a Jungle Disk. It's not something inside Eucalyptus that is that product la laid on top of it. I think my question's just been answered. I was going to ask about migrating between services, and are you aware of any large-scale migrations that have been done to or from Eucalyptus? Um, I know of a couple, and unfortunately, I can't tell you who they are, and this is very frustrating to us. Uh, 
One of the um, corporate goals we have at Eucalyptus right now is to get customers who are willing to um, let us um, announce that that's what they're using. Um, to do large migrations to and from, there is a um, really awesome Python library called Boto, um, which um, someone started working on a few years ago as a um, Python API on top of all the Amazon Web Services stuff. And we thought it was so awesome, we hired the guy who writes it. Um, so there are um, people who have written scripts in Python using Boto to be pulling objects out of S3 and putting it into Walrus or moving it from one Walrus server to another. I'm just wondering if you guys had any plans to uh, to look at addressing uh, data distribution across multiple machines or at least multiple disks. We yeah. are, and um, it's one of the things where the engineers are arguing back and forth about how to do it. Um, we know it's something we have to do. Um, there are plans, but there is, that, as of yet, no code. Um, if you have any awesome ideas for doing it yourself, like I said, we take patches. All right. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.